How are you, ma'am? I'm well, Senator. Let's talk a little about Medicaid, because we're getting this kind of rosy scenario of Obamacare and of the Republican attempt to replace it. It would just seem a little bit kind of odd. First, I want to note for the record that President Trump has said in various ways that he doesn't want people to lose coverage. He actually would like to cover as many people as under Obamacare, wishes to take care of those with pre-existing conditions, and uh, to do it without mandates and to lower cost. Those will be your marching orders. Fair statement? Absolutely. Now, now let's go to you and I. We talked at a previous meeting. We've both worked in public hospitals for the uninsured and, and for the poorly insured, folks like Medicaid. Now, let's just talk a little bit about Medicaid. Why would we see patients on Medicaid at a hospital for the uninsured? Uh, if they wanted to see an orthopedic and orthopedist in private practice, uh, does Medicaid pay a provider well enough to cover cost of seeing an orthopedic patient? Uh, oftentimes it, it does not, and, and in fact, as you well know, and as I uh, mentioned before, uh, one out of three physicians who ought to be able to see Medicaid patients in this nation do not take any Medicaid patients, and there's a reason for that, whether it's reimbursement or whether it's hassle factor, or whether it's regulations or the like. Uh, but, but that's a system that isn't working for those patients, and we ought to be honest about that and look at that and answer the question why and then address that. I will note that when the uh, House version of the ACA passed, Robert Pear in the New York Times wrote an article about a Michigan physician, physician who, an oncologist, who had so many Medicaid patients from Michigan Medicare that she, Medicaid that she was going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And she had to discharge patients from her practice. Um, now, the ranking member said we can't have alternative facts. I agree with that. We also know of that New England Journal of Medicine article speaking about Medicaid expansion in Oregon, about how when they expanded Medicaid in Oregon, outcomes did not improve. So I suppose that kind of informs you as we see, as you say, we need to make Medicaid something that works better for patients. Absolutely. And we need to look at, at, at the right metrics. Uh, j just gaining coverage for individuals is an admirable goal, but it, is, it ought not be the only goal. Uh, and we must have a goal in healthcare, especially, to have, keep the patient at the center and realize what kind of care and coverage we're providing for people on the ground, for real people in real lives, and whether or not we're affecting them in a positive way or a negative way. If we're affecting them in a negative way, then again, we need to be honest with ourselves and say, how can we improve that? Now, a lot of times there's this kind of conflation of per, of, of, uh, per beneficiary payments to the states per Medicaid enrollee and block grants, which to me is a conflation. I'll note that uh, Bill Clinton uh, on the left, and Phil Graham and Rick Santorum on the right proposed per beneficiary payment some time ago. And it's actually how the, would you agree with this, how the Federal Employees Health Benefit Program pays for these federal employees, they pay per beneficiary payment to a insurer. Fair statement? Correct. Wouldn't it be great if Medicaid worked as well as the uh, Federal Employees Health Benefit Program in terms of improved outcomes? Well, it, it, it would indeed. In fact, when you talk about the Medicaid population, it's not a monolithic population, as you well know. There's, there are four different demographic groups per, uh, uh, so within it, seniors and disabled, and then healthy moms and kids, by and large. And we treat each one of those folks exactly the same from the Medicaid rules. So when you're pressed on whether, by golly, you believe in block grants, is there any nuance? I don't hear any of the nuances that we're discussing offered in that question. But frankly, you can't address that. Are you speaking about a per beneficiary payment? Are you speaking about uh, each of those four, one of those four? Uh, how do you dice that? New York is an older state. Demographically, Utah is a very young state. Fair statement? Ab absolutely. And, that, and those are the things that I think we, we, we tend not to look at because they're more difficult to measure. They're more difficult to look at. But when we're talking about people's lives, when we're talking about people's health care, then it's imperative that we do the extra work that needs to be done to determine whether or not, yes, indeed, the public policy that we're putting forward is going to help you and not harm you. Now, let me ask, because there's also some criticism of your proposal about health savings accounts. I love them because they activate the patient. I think we're both familiar with the Healthy Indiana plan, mm -hmm. where um, on a waiver, they gave folks of lower income health savings accounts and had better outcomes, decreased ER usage. Any comment on that? Just that, that when, when people do engage in their health care, they, they tend to demand more. They tend to demand better, uh, uh, better services. Um, and individuals that have greater opportunity for choices of who they see, where they're treated, when they're treated, and the like, have greater uh, uh, um, uh, opportunity 
uh, to gain better health care. So going back to not wanting to have alternative facts, if we contrast the experience in Healthy Indiana with the experience in Oregon, where a National Bureau of Economic Research, I think if I get that uh, acronym correct, published in the New England Journal of Medicine, found no difference in outcomes in those who were fulfilled through a Medicaid expansion program in Oregon. Contrast that absence of good effect, if you will, in outcomes, with that in which Indiana attempted to engage patients to become activated in their own care, ER usage actually fell, but outcomes improved. I think in our world of standard facts, I kind of like your position. Thanks for bringing a nuanced, informed view to the health care reform debate. Thank Dr. You, Price. Thanks, Senator. Senator Bradford. Uh, two statements before I ask a couple.